Hello there, this is Slater Blauer from violinlounge.com. Now you are watching Violin Lounge TV, where I help violinists and violists worldwide improve their playing with joy. And I've got a question from Peter. Hi Slata, I've got another question. I hope it's okay that I ask you something so often. Well, that's uh, perfectly okay. Just uh, don't expect me to make a video for you the next day. Uh, but you don't, so it's all fine. And uh, you will uh, find questions to your answers uh, in some time. Um, I'm learn slowly learning how to place fingers on the fingerboard. I want to play in tune and to do that I need to master a skill which will help me to recognize sounds correctly. I can check if I'm playing in tune by comparing with open strings or by other ways. How do I learn ear and finger accuracy? What's the easiest way to learn that? Well, there are many things to say about this subject and I could probably fill hours and hours of video for that. But in just a couple of minutes I will let you know what, what the things are that you need to look into. Well, um, if you are playing the violin, you are constantly listening to the sound, testing it to your internal hearing, and then adjusting it. So there is no way in which you can learn in, so let's say, a couple of years uh, to play perfectly into, in, in pitch uh, with, with headphones on or something. So violin playing is constantly listening and adjusting. If you listen to your own violin playing, you must know if it's in tune. Um, to be able to hear that, you must have an uh, internal imagination. Like you can imagine um, how an apple looks, for example, and then you can uh, imagine a photograph or something 3D, or you can imagine just a kind of cartoon of it. You can really have an image in your head, and that's a visual image. Now you can also in your head have a sound image, so an understanding of what's happening uh, in the music, uh, maybe an idea of the feeling it gives you, and you can imagine in your head, like maybe you've heard on the radio uh, a song and it's just constantly in your head, it's constantly repeating and playing in your head and you can't really get rid of it, um, well that's your internal hearing. Uh, <laughs> And if uh, we call this internal hearing and this imagination, so hearing a sound without a sound being there. So if you see the apple in your head while well, there's no apple or a picture of it uh, somewhere around you. Uh, we call all this audiation, so the understanding and the imagination of sound. Um, maybe you can google around that subject a little. Audiation, there are several ways to train that. Um, it's, yeah, you need to be able, if you play something, to test it to your internal hearing. If you're not imagining something, there is nothing uh, to, to be tested. So you can't really say, okay, this is what I'm playing, this is what it should sound, and, this is, and here's the difference. You need to have that picture in your head before you play it. Then you can hear if it's in tune. If you have an in tune picture in your head and you can pair, compare your playing with it. Okay, there are also a lot of uh, ways in lessons how you can train a student's uh, ear and how you can train a student's intonation. Uh, there is online a lot of ear training software where you can learn to recognize pitch and, and intervals and um, uh, and, and, and chords and all uh, kind of that, chord progressions, uh, everything. Um, and then, of course, we've got the finger accuracy. Well, this starts, this is maybe 80% mentally. And so it's not really, of course, you train your fingers, you train your muscle memory, but intonation in, in, in 80, maybe even more percent, is here and not in your hands. Um, So you should really be able to imagine the notes and then adjust to it constantly and also listen to other players and adjust on that and um, that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, of course, to train your muscle memory and to train your ear, uh, practicing scales is very useful. And of course... Uh, it doesn't happen in a day. It takes a lot of training and a lot of practice and a lot of lessons to be able to play in tune. Uh, and it will never be perfect. <laughs> um, and what I recommend is also be conscious. Be conscious. Don't just play notes and say, hey, that's the second finger on the A string. Uh, 
be conscious about what you hear, what you want to hear, what you are playing. Listen to your own playing. Lots of people who are playing don't listen to their, themselves. And that's the most, most uh, difficult part of violin playing. Just really listen to yourself and, and um, be able to, to test that against your internal um, well, imagination of sound. So I, I, it might be a little bit fake and uh, sorry that I can't give you just the uh, solution like this is how you learn it and uh, you will uh, play in tune in a couple of days. That's just uh, not your reality. I can't do magic here. <laughs> um, uh, so I hope it's been useful to you. Thank you for watching Violin Lounge uh, TV. If you have any questions on me or violin or viola playing, please post a comment below or send an email to info at violinlounge.com. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, then please subscribe. And if you'd like more people to benefit from these videos, then please share it with your friends. Thank you for sharing the joy of violin playing with me. Bye bye! Join me in the free workshop Weight versus Pressure where I teach you to play the violin effortless with a beautiful tone. Go to www.violinlounge.com slash free hyphen workshop to get direct access to this workshop. I'm sure it will be worth it.